Hey everyone, in today's video, I want to show you how to implement this file uploader called Uppy into a Flask app while also using Uppy's feature to allow you to upload to Amazon S3 directly. So I really like this file uploader as just a general file uploader. Like if you need any complicated uh, file upload system, I think this is a really good tool. It's free to use so uh, you can put it in your app pretty easily. And I just wanted to show you one of the more complicated use cases in this video, which is uploading the files directly to S3. So the idea here is I'll go to browse files. I'll select a file. We see what the file is here, dummy.pdf. The name of the file is gonna change. We see it's uploading complete. And then if I go to my bucket, I have nothing here. And then when I refresh, we see that I have a file called uppyfile.pdf. So I named it uppyfile in the code, which you'll see when I actually work on the code. Uh, but the idea here is that my app never received this file. Uppy, the file uploader, took this file and sent it to S3 directly. So to do that, there are some steps that you need to take, and that's what I'm gonna show you in this video. And you'll see how easy it is to do and um, how powerful it is, especially for larger files. Like for example, if you don't wanna upload a one gigabyte file to your app first and then forward that to AWS, uh, you can use Uppy to upload it directly to AWS so it reduces the amount of load on your app. So if you have any questions beyond this video on Uppy and you want my help one-on-one, -on -one, uh, feel free to go to prettyprinted.com slash coaching. And what I do there is I just help people in one-on-one -on -one situations with their apps. So Python, Flask, JavaScript, uh, basically anything that I know I can help you with. So feel free to reach out to me. Just go to prettyprinted.com slash coaching. So now let's get into creating this very simple uploader, but also a very powerful uploader using Flask, Uppy, and the integration to Amazon S3. Before we do anything with the code, we need to make sure that we have a bucket on S3 that's set up properly. So here I created a bucket called One More Test Bucket. And what you need to do is, well, you don't necessarily need to do this, but I made my bucket public just to make everything simple. I added this bucket policy to make things public. And then down here in the course, I added this so I can uh, use the feature that allows me to upload directly to S3. So let me show you where that comes from. You can go to uploaders down here and then AWS S3. And then here, this course configuration that I'm using is this. So you can just copy this and paste it into the course configuration here. The only thing you need to change is the allowed origin. So right now I'm using uh, 127.0.0.1.5000 because I'm developing this locally. But once you deploy it, this allowed origin needs to include like whatever the domain name of your app is going to be. So you'll need all of that. So now let's go over to the code. And I have a virtual environment set up, but I don't have anything else, so I can get started here. So the first thing I want to do is I want to install Flask. So Flask, of course, is necessary because this will be a Flask demo. And then I want to install Bodo3. So Bodo3 is a library to interface with different services on AWS, so I need to install that. Next, I'll create an app.py. So I'm going to make this like a simple a Flask app, I'm not gonna create multiple files for the Flask app, I'm just gonna put everything in one file because there's really not that much code to write. So first I'll import Bodo3 because I'll need that to interface with AWS. And then uh, from Flask, I wanna import the Flask class and I want to import the render template function. And in addition to this, I want to import request, I believe, yeah, I'll need requests. And then finally, I want to import something from BodoCore. So BodoCore.config, I want to import config. So of course you can uh, have this be a regular import like this. You can import uh, BodoCore like this, but I prefer this style, so I'll use Bodo3 in one way. And I'll use config in a slightly different way because I only want config. Okay, so now that I have that, I can instantiate my Flask app. And I want to create a route, and this will hold the page that has the uploader on it, as you saw in the intro. So I'll return render template and index.html. So I'll create that in a second. And then I'll create a second route that handles the uppy stuff. So let me go ahead and create that template. So templates, and then inside of templates, I'll create a file called index.html. I'll use image to have this scaffolding here. And now what I want to do is I want to go over to the Uppy documentation, and I want to go to the quick start. And I believe I can just take the full feature extendable UI here. There are multiple examples, 
and then click CDN. And I just wanna copy and paste this into my code. So let me just grab this and I'll put it in the body here. So this is almost okay. And then what I'll do is I'll move this link for the CSS into the head section. And I can name this uh, Uppy Demo. And then I have this uh, div here, Uppy. And then I'm importing uh, Uppy and Dashboard from the library. I'm using a module here. So this is uh, one approach that you can take. Another approach that you can take if you have other files is you can do this import in a separate file and put them on Windows. So I have an example on my clipboard. Let me just show you, but I'm not gonna use it in this example here. So what you would do is you would import uh, these three things. So I'll use S3 as well uh, from the same location and then put them on Windows. So then they become like global objects that are available in all of your JavaScript. So then in here you can uh, use them. So it kind of depends on how you have your JavaScript set up. Since I'm using it in such a straightforward way in the HTML, like this is fine. But if you had a more complicated setup and you're not using like a bundler, like you're not building like an actual front end app like React or Vue, then I think this approach will work. So let me go back. And now that I have this, I should be able to see it when I load my app. And what I'll do is I'll just put a style up here too, just so it can uh, be like in the center of the page. So style, um, I'll do body, and then we'll say display flex. And I just want to align items uh, center and justify content center. And I'll say the height of the body will be 100 uh, units of the view height. So now that I have this, let's try starting the Flask app. I'll put debug mode on and I'll start the Flask app and I'll turn off my other server. So now I can start it. And now let's go to 127.0.0.1 port 5000 in the browser. And we see the Uppy demo here. So right now nothing is appearing. And I've run into this before. It has to do with the version. So I'm going to change the version of Uppy to 3.18.1. So let me just change those two and save. And now when I load this, we see Uppy here. So I can select a file and upload, but it's going to fail because I haven't set it up to upload anywhere yet. But this is what it looks like. So you get this out of the box. So now with Uppy installed and working, let's now use AWS in this. So Couple of steps here. I need to set up the Uppy plugin to use AWS. And then I also need to create an endpoint that will return a signed URL that will allow Uppy to upload directly to S3. And the reason why I need the signed URL is so S3 knows that Uppy has permission to upload into my bucket. So let's start with creating that endpoint. And then the Uppy part of it will be very simple. So I'm going to create a new route and I'm going to call this uppy slash s3. Um, this is gonna take a post request. It doesn't have to, but I'll make mine take a post request because I'm defining this route. And I'll just call this uppy s3 as a function name. So the first thing I wanna do is I want to create like an s3 client using Bodo3. So I can do Bodo3.client, and the first argument is the type of service that you're using. So s3 is a service. And then the second argument is going to be the location of the thing that you're gonna use. So in my case, it's US East 2. This is the region that you have in your AWS account. And then finally for config, I want to use the config class that I imported earlier and I want to use signature version equals v4. So by default, the signature version is version two, I believe, and that won't work with the pre-signed URL. So I need to manually switch it to version four. So that's why I'm doing this. It should be something that's default, but it isn't. So I just add this line of code here. Okay, so the pre-signed URL, I'll create a variable for it, and it's going to come from the S3 client, and it comes from when I call generate pre-signed URL. So this method on S3 client will uh, generate the URL. So it takes three arguments uh, that I need, three main arguments. So the first is the, the type of operation that I'm allowing with this pre-signed URL. So what I'm allowing is Uppy to upload to S3. So with that, they call it putting an object. So what I can do is I could just do put object here. So sometimes this can be git, sometimes this can be uh, delete, but in my case, I want this to be put. I'm adding an object to my bucket. The second argument is going to be params, and this is going to be a dictionary. 
And the first thing in the dictionary will be the name of the bucket. So my bucket is called one more test bucket, as you saw when I had the S3 dashboard open. And then a key, so this capital K key, and this is the name of the file. So we'll call this uh, uppy file.pdf. I'm going to just work with PDFs, uh, but of course, if you wanted to, you could uh, pass in other files. So just because I'm working with uh, PDFs only, I'll pass in the content type of application slash PDF, just like that. Next, what I can do is I can set an expiration on the URL. So this will be expires in, so capital E, capital I, and this is a number of seconds. So let's give it um, 3,600 seconds. All right, and what Uppy expects, so Uppy is the thing that's going to call this, is it's going to return a dictionary, or in this case, a JSON object once it gets to Uppy. So there are a few things that I need. So first is the method. So I'm going to upload files using the put method. So Uppy needs to know which type of method to use, either put or post. Next, I need the URL. So the URL, the pre-signed URL, is just going to be the URL that I created above. And then the headers. So the headers are good to just tell um, Amazon what the content type is. So content type is going to be application slash PDF, right? So you can have this as a variable. You can have the file name as a variable, but for demonstration purposes in this video, I'm just hard coding both the file name and the type of file. So this is what Uppy expects, and that's all Uppy expects. So I'm done with this part. And you know, looking at this, this doesn't do much. So let's just make this a git. So I'll just remove methods posts, and I'll just leave this as git. Post is good if you're sending extra information. So if you did send the name of the file or the content type, um, you can pass that here. But in my case, I'm just going to generate the URL and that's it. So I think a git request is just fine. So now let's go over to the code again. And I have this import uppy and dashboard here. I also want to import a AWS S3, just like that. And now I have the uppy object and I'm saying uppy.use the dashboard. So the dashboard is this thing that we see here, uh, this default way of uploading files. And I also wanna put another use on here. So I'll just do dot use and it will just attach to this one since it's the last thing. And I want to use AWS. So AWS S3. And the only thing I need to pass is an object with a key having something called git upload parameters, which will be a function that Uppy will call and it expects a dictionary or an object in return that has this information. So to get this information to Uppy, we're gonna perform a fetch. So let me make this bigger. And what I can do is I can do git upload uh, parameters. So this is the name of the key. Because it's a function, I can just do it all in one go. Like I don't need to have the key colon and then the function. I can just use the name of the function here and it will act as the key. And then the value will be the actual function. So uh, file and options are the two parameters that Uppy receives. And all I wanna do is return fetch. And this fetch and the, and the response getting converted to JSON uh, needs to be returned here and then Uppy will know how to handle it from there. So the first thing I wanna do is I want to fetch that endpoint that I created. So Uppy slash S3 is what I called it, right? Uppy slash S3. And then for the fetch, I don't need like a, a method, I don't need a body, I don't need anything like that, I just need to get the response. So when this completes, I'll just say then. So we'll have the response, if I can type response properly. Use an arrow function and then this will return JSON. So here Uppy should know how to handle this. So I'm calling the endpoint that I have here, right? It's gonna create a key. It's gonna create a URL to upload a file called uppyfile.pdf with the content type application PDF. And then it's gonna return that to Uppy. So that is all I need for the AWS process to work. And then what I'll do here is I'll say Uppy. So I'll use the Uppy object and I'll say on, on upload dash success. Uh, this is going to take in a file and a response. Those are the two parameters. And it's going to be a function that gets called. And 
really what I want to do is I just want to alert so we can see it. So it's going to be response.upload URL here. Okay, so if I typed everything correctly, this should work. So let's take a look at the app. Uh, refresh the page and we can open up the console, make sure we don't have any errors. I'll go ahead and select a file, so dummy, and the button here to upload the file. So it hasn't started yet. Let me refresh my bucket here and let me go to the objects page. So you see I have no objects in here. And when I upload this, I'm expecting that it can upload uh, to Uppy properly. And when I hit upload, I'm expecting it to upload to S3, assuming there are no errors. If there are errors, we can address it. So upload one file, upload complete. If we look at the network tab here, uh, one request is to my app on 127.0.0.1, and then two requests are to AWS, so S3 here. It's uploading to my bucket. So now when I go to the bucket here and refresh, I see the uppyfile.pdf. I can click on that, I can open it, and it's just gonna show me the dummy PDF file that I uploaded. This is exactly the file that I uploaded. So as you can see, I didn't have to have the file itself go through the server. I just needed to generate this URL and then return this dictionary. And then Uppy was able to take that and run with it. So it was able to take that and upload to S3 automatically. So there's more you can do with this. Um, another feature that you can have with this is you can do multi-part uh, uploads. So basically it will split the file into chunks and then upload each chunk individually. It can also upload those chunks in parallel. So it can be a bit faster and it can be robust because if any chunk fails, it can automatically restart. So that's it for this video. I just want to show you a very simple implementation of Uppy in Flask. I'll consider making a video where I talk about how to uh, do the multi-part uploads. It's kind of a similar process to what I've done here, except it takes like four or five more routes that I have to define to handle all of the multi-part stuff. So I'll consider making a video for that. But for now, I think this is enough to get you started with Uppy. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.